Welcome back guys, Slow Bacon here, and welcome back to another Total War Warhammer Battle Replay. Today we've got a nice replay for you boys. We've got Viking Cat bringing the lovely Dawi up against Pippington, bringing their mighty Greenskins. Oh yes, Greenskins. So this is a match that was played in the Questing Cup uh, number 19, which was held over the weekend that's just been, uh, which was cast by Ninja Hund and our very own Surex. Uh, so links to both of their channels will be in the description down below. This is a match that they didn't actually cast. It was one that was played in the background, uh, but it's one that I was very excited to see. So um, big thank you to Viking Cat for sending it to me. Um, he actually sent me a lot of replays, 21 in total he actually sent me. So over the next couple of weeks, we'll try and get through some of the better matches that he sent me. Uh, not all from the Question Cup, of course. There were some that were uh, just some cool stuff stuff that he wanted me to have a look at. So we'll go through those uh, over the next couple of weeks and have a look at some of the exciting matchups. So all right, let's go through the two armies. This is of course a, a very, well I think it's a very hard matchup for the Greenskins uh, coming up against the Dawi, especially on a map like this where there's lots of opportunities to camp like this uh, map here, which is of course the uh, Silver Spa. So pretty common uh, that the Dwarfs would sit up here. Uh, another place they like to set up, of course, is here if they're on this side of the map. Uh, if they're on the other side of the map, it's obviously there or there. Um, without any uh, chariots or anything like that to really punch through the lines, uh, which Pippington did not bring, uh, makes it for a very tough matchup for the Greenskins, just trying to bash your way through the dwarves. Uh, yeah. Very tough matchup in general for the uh, for the Greenskins, I find. Just on maps like this, if you've got a map where you can get a lot of surrounds and stuff, obviously it's a lot easier um, playing against the dwarves. But nonetheless, let's go through the armies. Uh, can we take that off, please? Thank you. So, uh, Viking Cat's brought one, two units of Thunderers. He's got a front line of Iron Breakers, number three, numbering three, I should say, uh, including the Regiment of Renown, the Norm Grinkling's Iron Breakers, a very, very tough unit, of course. He's just got the one. He's just got the one unit of dwarf warriors. He's got the Grumbling Guard Regiment of Renown, which is the Longbeards. They have the lovely. Uh, if I can show you guys, they have the lovely buff. Where is it? I'm gonna get in close. They have the lovely buff there, uh, which is 18% vigor, which is massive. So it keeps your dwarfs pretty much um, at full vigor throughout the whole match. Very, very good buff that one there. Um, he's got. Uh, the Regiment of Renown Miners, who of course do fire damage, very, very good. He's got the Regiment of Renown Slayers, the old Dragon Black Slayers, of course. And he's got the Regiment of Renown Goblobber, which is arguably the best artillery piece in the game, especially for its cost. I think it's 800, um, and it's got that awesome debuff again. Can we get in and have a look? Oh, I wish they would fix this. Uh, there. Discourage, minus 16 leadership. So if you hit an enemy artillery piece with that, pretty much routes them in one or two shots. It's so good. We've also got uh, one gyrocopter with brimstone guns. Obviously flying around the top there. And the leadership, just making sure I haven't missed one. No, I haven't. He's only brought the, the run rune smith. Uh, we have rune of negation and rune of wrath and ruin. So that's 20. Uh, sorry, that's that's the rune lord. Can we get the rune smith, please? Thank you. So that's 22% damage uh, reduction, obviously, to allies in a 40 meter radius, and the Rune of Wrath and Ruin. Rune Lord's got the exact same runes, except his Rune of Negation is 44%, and he's obviously got the Master Rune of Wrath and Ruin, which does a tremendous amount of damage. These two runes combined, or individually, I guess, um, are arguably the strongest quote unquote spells in the game, because they don't class as spells, even though they do magic damage, but they're not spells. Okay. They're not spells, right? <laughs> okay. So for the lovely Greenskins, of course, my favourite faction, and actually Viking Cat's favourite faction as well, even though he's playing the Dwarfs, but I guess I don't know who he picked first in this matchup. Anyway, he's brought one, two, three units of Black Orcs. He's got two units of Trolls. Oh, I love that pick. I love the Trolls. Trolls are so cool. They just break so fast, but being in supported with the Black Orcs, who pretty much don't break at all, uh, they may actually stay in the fight for quite a long time. He's got the Rusty Arrows, of course, with their lovely Sunder Armor debuff. If we can show it. There we are. Lovely Sunder Armor debuff. Minus 30 armor. Obviously very, very good against the Dwarfs. He's got the Arachnorok Queen. Very, very cool unit, of course, with the, the ability to summon in those wee spiders um, to type any range units. Although, Viking Cat didn't bring a heck of a lot of range units, but anyway... And we've got one, two units of Wolfrider Archers, including uh, Morgan's Mangy Marauders, which is, of course, armor-piercing damage. Very, very cool. Now, just over here, we've got two units of Vanguarded uh, Nasty Skulkers. They, of course, have the Stalk ability, so Viking Cat can't see those at the moment, or the Dwarf Player can't see those. I'm just going to say the Dwarf Player, it's easier. The Dwarf Player can't see those at the moment, so yeah, they have the Stalk ability. And there's also one 
sneakily, I really like this Vanguard deployment by the way, really sneakily put over here to run down in here. So that's to counter the Dwarf um, camping in those two positions, uh, which we indicated at the start of the map. So obviously these guys can... <coughs> Sorry, sneeze. These guys can obviously run down this way into this forest, and if he did actually deploy up here, he's got room to um, put these guys up into this one here. Um, so for those of you who don't know what the Questing Cup is or aren't following the Questing Cup or anything like that, um, it's held every week, um, although we did just have a long break because Sappho T, who is the, normally the other caster, um, has been away on holiday, but um, Ninja Hunt wanted to get back into it, so he asked somebody else um, to cast with him. In this case, it was Surix. I believe Surix has casted this one before. It may have been another tournament. Anyway, they, they both did a fantastic job. I really like both those casters. I really like Sappho T as well. Um, it's hard to say which one I like the most. <laughs> I like them all. They're all great. They're all great casters, so definitely go and check those boys out. Um, but yeah, there is some unit restrictions and stuff um, in the tournament, um, obviously around what units you can bring. Um, it doesn't really affect this matchup because... Both of these armies are small and quite elite, um, but I'll just quickly go through a couple of them. So there's a maximum of five of any of the same unit. Um, that includes variations, so, you know, Black Orcs plus, obviously, the Regiment of Renown Black Orcs. That all counts towards that total five. Uh, Missile Cav, which, again, there's not really an issue in this one. There's a maximum of four. That includes um, Flying and la Land Cav. Uh, Heroes is a maximum of three, um, with a maximum of two of any of the same unit. So there's no, like, three Gorble um, cheesy stuff going on there. Uh, that doesn't include the Lord, by the way, the legendary Lord, that is. Um, spellcasters, there's a limit of two, but you cannot use two of the same spellcasters. So you can't have two spirit leeches, you know, you can't have two of those, you can only have one. Um, but you could bring, you know, spirit leech and, I don't know, flock of doom or something if you bring the beast men, you know, that type of thing. You could do that if you wanted to. Um, and there's no, uh, there's no camping on the edge of the map. This position is just in front of it, but you can't camp on here. Yeah, and you can't abuse um, invisible walls. And I believe there's one here. I don't know if you can actually run up there or not. There is one here where you can't actually get in this way, which is why I don't think he's deployed over this side, because you can't do that. Um, this is just using terrain to your advantage. But yeah, I don't think you can run... There's something with this area where you can't run up. I think it's that part there. You can run up here, but I don't think you can run up there. Which So that counts as an invisible wall, so you can't actually deploy there um, in the context of this uh, tournament, that is. Um, that's about it. Generally, it's just a, you know, be respectful to your um, opponent, all that type of stuff. You know, show good sportsmanship and stuff like that. And the really good thing is Ninja Hunt actually really enforces the rules, uh, which is great. Oh, one of the other rules that, that's really important um, is there's a minimum model count of 300. So you have to bring at least 300 troops, uh, which kind of eliminates a lot of the cheesy builds. You know, you can't bring like three giants, Black Orc, uh, Grimgore type build, you know, against the vampire counts. You can't do stuff like that because there's not enough models within your army to actually count. So it needs to be above 300. And the other rule is, of course, both sides need to be attacking. So you'll see a lot of dwarf players will bring a gyrocopter because that counts as attacking. Yes, he's got an artillery piece, but if this ar artillery piece is not actually firing, say these guys are deployed real far back and he's got these two to run forward, he counts as attacking because he's running with these. Um, as long as they don't get in range of that catapult and the catapult doesn't start firing, that doesn't count as attacking, right? So a lot of people will bring uh, a gyrocopter of some description just to be able to fly over the map and start attacking. If he did not have the gyrocopter or the um, gobblobber, for instance, he would have to actually move his army forward. So there's no, like, I'm just going to camp in these trees and wait for you to come to me. You can't do that. You can't do that within the campaign. You have, I mean, within the tournament, sorry, you have to be attacking. Cool. That's the rules. There's some of them anyway. If you guys want to check it out more, uh, it's all over on Ninja Hunt's channel. Again, the links will be in the description down below. Right, let's... Let's get into it. Knock these off. I really do like um, I really do like the Ironbreakers if I'm playing with the Dwarfs, but God, I hate playing against them. They're so strong. They're absolutely ridiculously strong. They can hang uh, hang out, or well, hold out, I guess, against pretty much any unit in the game. So strong. It's going to be really hard for the Greenskins to actually punch in here and break through them. But we're going to have Azag uh, moving up. I'm assuming he's going to try and drop some Spirit Leash. He'll probably, we'll probably drop and draw on... Uh, We'll probably try and drop it on the um, gyrocopter there. Does actually a lot of damage to to that. All right, we've got the gobblobber throwing. Oh no, green skins! Watch out, black orcs! Oh shit! <laughs> it does so much damage. How many models did they lose? Quite a few actually out of there. They lost five models in the first volley. Jesus! Such a good artillery piece. Such a good artillery piece. Right, we're we moving in with the Skulkers. We are. These Skulkers are going to be out of it a wee bit. I would have actually liked to have seen them wait, honestly, 
just stay at the back a wee bit. Use your um, two dudes and your flying lord um, to count as attacking, because these guys are going to take forever to get involved in this fight. Forever to get involved in this fight. The spider's hanging out in the forest over here. Return to her home. She's like, oh, I'm back in the forest. Yay! But she really needs to get in and start dropping some of those... Um, some of those spiderlings on top of this. You look how much damage this goblob is doing. Oh my god, that's ridiculous. Rusty Arrow's down to 77 models. This Black Hawk's now down to 45, 41 now. Oh, it's going to be more. No, 41 still. These Rusty Arrows are actually breaking because of that debuff coming in from the Goblover, of course. With that minus 16, and obviously being Goblins, they don't have a heck of a lot of leadership to start off with. And these Thunderers, I'm assuming they're going to get a lovely volley off into these Black Hawks. Look at them just... Oh, I know they're turning and running. Ragnarok Queen is coming in. She would have dropped those lovely spiders on there, of course. Have we got... Nasty Skulkers sneaking in the back. I can't actually see them. Where are they? Oh, I need to take that off so I can see. Oh, no. Yeah, they are in the back there. Oh, they got destroyed by the um, Regiment of our Miners and, of course, the Dragonback Slayers. Ripping these boys apart. Of course, they've got no armor whatsoever. Well, they've got 25, I think it is, top of my head. Um, and, of course, those Slayers will do maximum damage against those. Rusty Arrows are finally in firing range. Oh, here come some blasting charges into these Black Hawks. Oh, no. Oh, where's Grimble where you need them? Oh, the spider's in. Spider's in on top of that rock lob, uh, goblob or so. Although she's going to be really exposed to these guns now. Come on, spawn some spiders in there. Spawn some, no, just spawn some spiders. There we go, there's some spiders coming in. Go, spiders. Eat up some dwarfs. They won't actually kill those, but they will occupy them, of course, for as long as possible. Right, these other units, uh, two units of Nasty Skulkers are finally um, here, or finally coming to the battle. So we've got a unit of trolls which of course do massive armor piercing damage, I believe it's like 85, 86 armor piercing damage, and of course the Black Hawks with their 40 something, 40 something, 42 armor piercing damage, smashing against these iron breakers, but you see those iron breakers are just holding, just holding forever, and now we're starting to push into the back of these miners as well. It's going to be very hard for the Greenskins to punch through there. We've got a Wrath and Ruin coming down anywhere, I can't quite see, I'm assuming this has had a Wrath and Ruin stuck on it, just saw how low it is, down to 34 models on that, all health all but gone. These Blackhawks down to 30, we have extra health. Oh, now we've got the Regiment of Renowned Slayers onto that Arachnorok Queen. She won't like that, she needs to get out of there. She needs to get back behind this line or else they'll just get eaten to pieces. Oh, these nasty Skulkers have actually made it through. Did they run through that re gap there? The wee buggers, they must have, they must have. On top of those uh, Thunderers, that's good. They may actually, may actually route out because that's the corner of the map right there. Are they going to? Are they going to route them out? Police, route them out. Uh, as a, of course, oh, on Skull Munch, I forgot to say, we was actually on Skull Munch, of course, Skull Munch, a very, very good wyvern mount. Eating these Thunderers for breakfast, get into it. Get into it. Nice. Oh no, the Thunderers haven't routed off, they've stopped right here. Oh, there's some spiders coming in there, they may cause enough leadership penalty to route them again, I doubt it, but they may do. Rusty arrows, come on, boys. Get some shots in there, the dwarfs are, um... Holding very well. These guys have not been involved in the fight pretty much at all. Have they got any kills? One kill. Well, one kill and the 16 ammo. 18. He hasn't fired a shot yet. He's fired a couple, I think, and that's about it. These guys really need to get in the battle. Even if they're charging in here into the back. Oh, good lord. Some more blasting charges coming down on Azak. Oh, jump out of there. That goblob is gone, though, isn't it? Yeah, it's gone. It's gone. Oh, there's a lot of dwarf left, and there's not so much of the greenskins left. Yeah, these guys, oh, they're finally in, finally in, finally in closer. That armor-piercing damage from the major mortars would have been really, really nice. I guess we'll try and take down that um, brimstone gun, but, yeah. Uh, Spirit Leech must have been going down on this rune lord, because he's about half health. Spider will do a lot of damage to it, but, yeah. Not enough. We really should have, Azig really should have been trying to smash this rune lord, because rune lords are real squishy, right? So Rune Lord, uh, um, sorry, Azek and the Spider would have been enough to take him down pretty quick, especially when you put Spirit Leech on top of that. A lot of the Greenskins have routed out, but they are coming back, as they do. Especially these Trolls, of course, they have natural regeneration, so their health will go back up. Uh, Rusty Arrows, how are you doing? 19 kills, that's not too bad. 21 kills on those nasty Skulkers, definitely want to get them back in there. Go Trolls. Grumbling's uh, Iron Breakers are just going to hold there, though. Even two units of Trolls with their, what's that, combined... 132 freaking armor pin, armor pin damage. It's probably not going to be enough even to break those. Uh, Goblin Big Boss is trying. Oh, he's on foot too. Oh, I didn't say that. 
Ah, it's interesting. I see a lot of the people bring him on foot and on um, his wolf mount. I always bring him on spider because I just think the spider is so much better. Uh, just for that uh, poison damage, of course. Oh, get him, Izzy. Through the trees. He'll chase him off, I believe. Uh, the greenskins are reforming in the back, but I just don't think they're going to have enough left. There's a lot of dwarfs remaining and a lot of ironbreakers remaining. The grumbling guard is still quite healthy as well. Dragonback Slayers have taken a bit of a pounding, but they won't get out of the match, of course. They're unbreakable. Yeah, there's still, what's that? Two fists of <laughs> health left on those. Uh, the miners, they're a bit lower, 25% maybe. There's another healthy unit of ironbreakers. Again, we're up 30-ish percent, something like that. Anzac is chasing off that um, gyrocopter. He will come back. He needs to come back to support his troops. Do we have any thunderers left? No, we don't. So now the Greenskins actually have an advantage because they have the only ranged units available in the game. So, in theory, these guys have to actually push out and attack. Like, there's no reason for these guys to be attacking into there now because he, in theory, should be having to attack because he doesn't have any ranged units left. Whereas this guy did. I would just reform my lines, like here. Um, set my archers, of course. Do as much damage as I can with the archers. Uh, of course, there is the Rune of Wrath and Ruin um, that can pump out, but it's only a really short range, so you kind of force them to attack. Oh, I've got a broken unit of trolls over in the back there. Another unit of uh, Blackhawks breaking over the back. I don't know what that one over there was. Another unit of Blackhawks in the back. Here comes Azag on Scalmancher. Come on, go for the Lord. Go for the Lord. Spider's there too. Oh, good charge, good charge. Took a, a fair chunk of his health. He's got uh, Spirit Leech on there at the same time. Come on, Spider, you need to get in there as well. You need that damage, that 400-odd armor-piercing damage that you do. Scalmunch is in. Azag's in. Azag doesn't have a lot of health left himself, though. He needs to be a wee bit careful, especially if he's pulling those Dragonback Slayers over. He's not. He's brutally over the other Runesmith. Come on, Spider. Oh, there's the Slayers here. Yes, he did bring them over. All right, now the Spider's going to be in a bit of trouble being isolated there with the um, Slayers and obviously the Rune Lord and the Runesmith on top of him. Ah, uh, the Spider's broken. Poor spider. Pytus, ah, spider's broken. Come on. Oh, there we go. Okay, yeah, very, very tough matchup for the, um, very tough matchup for the Greenskins on this map, I find, just because of the ability um, of the dwarfs to camp in those really lovely positions. Uh, Dragon Match Slayer's in there with 168 kills. That's pretty damn good. What, are, what happened for the Greenskins? 61 for the Spider Queen, uh, 18 and 15 for the Trolls, respectively. 16 of 4 for the Gobbo Archers. They're not going to do a lot of damage because, obviously, the heavy armor um, of the dwarfs. But uh, this one's got armor-piercing damage, which is kind of okay. The Skulkers did really well. 51 kills on that one. Actually, they did better than the Black Orcs. 23, 51, 32. But, of course, these guys were being hit um, by the Goblobber and, of course, the um, Archery Fire. And they were, obviously, the focus of the Wrath and Ruin runes on top of those as well. Ironbreakers, of course, holding their lines as they always do. 81, 35, and 54 kills, respectively. Thunderers did all right. Not not a tremendous amount of kills there, but I think they were firing into that um, Spider Queen for most of that. So 9 and 22 kills, respectively, on that. Uh, Azag did all right. 42 kills on that one. That's pretty good. All right, so yeah, if I can uh, manage to pick that one up, pick up that one. So this is the first match of three best of three series this was the first match that these guys played um in the second round it was and of course on silver spire once again all right guys hopefully you've enjoyed this video thanks for watching and we will see you next time